All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us here. This is Free China Post episode, I think, 41, but we'll see. We're not really sure, but, you know, we're, we're up here. We're doing it. It's been, like, three weeks since we recorded a podcast. No, uh, that's not true. Uh, okay. It's been three weeks since we've recorded a podcast that we'll post. <laughs> so we're back we're back we're back at it we went to we've been in hong kong we've been posting videos from hong kong so most of that i posted one but ari's done all the translate the i guess translation transcription stuff, adding subtitles stuff so props sorry for that i'm in the middle of doing one right now so which one uh the one with the middle-aged guy and the three younger guys Oh, okay, cool. I'm so, doing the one with the the guy who popped in with the the teenagers. Oh yeah, one of those girls was like 24, 25, but yeah, but the other two were yeah, the other two were pretty young. Yeah, so we got we're still posting those. It takes a while to edit and like transcribe everything, but we're getting them up there. So go 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 to free trying to post on YouTube and check out our stuff. Don't forget to subscribe ring, and ring the bell so you guys get noti- notifications when we post stuff. But that was fun. Um, I don't know. I guess I probably shouldn't use the word fun for that. It was a, a good experience. It was very eye- eye-opening. It really reminded me of a birthday party. I think it was fun. <laughs> Trying not to let anyone hear me eat, but I have to eat or I'm going to like fall asleep. Why are you going to fall asleep? Mm, because... I don't know. I'm just really tired. I woke up at like 8.30 the other day. I went uh-huh. to bed. Li- my friend came over yesterday night. And uh, so we stayed up a little late. And then... Doing what? Playing video games. We were playing A Way Out. Oh. Oh my I st- goodness. I still haven't finished that game. And he was like, oh, we should try to play that. I was like, all right. Yeah, that game's not bad. It's pretty cool. It's like a really interesting idea for a game. And it's cool that it's, you can play split screen because a lot of games are cutting that out. Yeah. I also was talking to him about maybe doing a, a movie review section for our our site because he's a he's like a, a director, like amateur director. He's Taiwanese. Mm-hmm. I did I did a movie review before for after we watched that Stalin movie. If you oh yeah, I remember. I do remember yeah. that. And I've done a few book reviews. I just put them all in life right now. Yeah, a bad place to put them. It'd be good if we could get more of that going on, but. Yeah, that would be acceptable. Slow steps. Step by step. But, um, I don't know, do you want to say anything about Hong Kong? I want to say that I was very surprised that that people's conception of Hong Kong's, of, of the Hong Kong, and the push towards democratization and independence is a lot more nuanced and complex than it is, I would say, for most other countries and their political systems most people tend to oversimplify politics but but hong kong people and i don't i don't necessarily say i agree with everything they say but um there i was surprised how for most of them they really are they thought they've thought deeply about it so when you ask them about independence and stuff like that a lot i was surprised that a lot of them aren't immediately in favor of it but what they're saying mm-hmm. is first we need to make sure that we have some semblance of democratization within the current system before we can even push for something else because because you think about hong kong if it became independent there's nothing to say that it would be a democracy it it could continue in much the same way where Mm -hmm. you basically have a legislative council and a chief executive who again are completely unelected yeah uh, and basically picked by the ccp picked by the cc but also heavily picked by business interests there i mean like i didn't i didn't actually realize that because from the books that I've read before on Hong Kong, I knew that the Legislative Council was directly elected, but I didn't realize that only a portion of the seats are directly elected, and that a good portion, more than half of the seats in the Legislative Council are picked by by um, industrial groups and business executives, and not by general election. And I also didn't realize that, in terms of the popular vote, that pro-China parties just like in the United States with the Republicans, they receive a majority of the vote. Uh-huh. In the, uh, they receive a uh, sorry a minority of the popular vote, but they receive a majority of the seats because of the way that it's structured. Yeah, consistently that they've actually out never won an outright majority, 
mm-hmm. yet they've never lost a majority of seats in the legislative council. They've had a persistent majority since the handover in 1987. It's quite shocking to me. Yeah, it's so really I, crazy. I was I was surprised that more of them weren't adamantly pro independence. That they, that also that um, they support the one country two systems. And when if yeah. from their lens, the, it's basically considering one country two systems or one country one system. But from the outside, you could have one country two systems or two countries two systems. Yeah, you know, you could establish a protectorate kind of status or whatever they. But Hong Kong wants, uh, sorry, China wants domination. So anyway, I was surprised at the level of nuance that they, that even teenagers displayed on these, these yeah. kinds of issues. Yeah, it was it was pretty eye opening. I was I was uh, I'm pretty much in the same boat as you. I was really expecting more people to say, calling for out and out independence. But a lot of people say, oh, you know, basically Hong Kong is not ready for independence. I think we had someone literally say that to us that just Hong Kong isn't prepared for. It. Well, were, this is we did have some people that said that. Most actually, I feel like most of the people said they were in favor of independence, but they like if they could just not snap their on. fingers. Yeah, it's basically like if we could snap our fingers and make it a democracy, we would. But that's not realistic. I feel like the 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 most similar country I, I've heard responses like this from is China, because the Chinese people have undergone a similar system of what I would say brainwash political brainwashing where basically you ask them about democratization and they say, mm-hmm. no, 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 we don't want democratization because yeah. China is chaotic. And it's, if you brought in democracy, we would just have complete chaos and everyone mm-hmm. would, you know, the, the system would collapse basically that they, and, it, and I, I mean, the educational systems are, are in Hong Kong are being influenced by, by mm-hmm. China to a great extent, but this, yeah, for sure. this idea that, the Chinese people that whatever the Chinese country too great too many different groups of people too too big whatever yeah they they, they can't handle democracy because it would lead to chaos it that was very eerily reminiscent of what I heard in China from many many people who I I've criti- I've, I've criticized to them the lack of democracy but they'll admit that there's no democracy but they're saying that we don't necessarily want it I've had people online and granted these are like pretty much I some of them literally were but I'm I assume most of them were uh, Wu Dong, but they're like yeah. basically told me they're like you know telling me about how like democracy is like this like like illness like mental illness they're like you're you're fooling yourself with these ideas of democracy like this is such like a a terrible way to live like it's not good for people to live under democracy and stuff it's just like you man. should see man the, I, I can send you some of the propaganda that they've put out because some of it is actually. Some of it is in English too, for other countries. Talking about, yeah. let me send you one of these. Actually, we've talked before that they have, especially for party members and stuff, that they have these websites where you need to log in through your smartphone and, and spend a uh-huh. certain amount of time. So some of these websites they have where they they have English versions where you share them with your friends abroad, stuff like that. And one of them. These videos was basically comparing the political systems and basically making the point that, well, in America, you know, yeah, they get to pick, but they get to, you know, they pick these clowns and and basically democracy is trash because it's all about who has more money. And these criticisms, they're not even lies. I mean, democracy is flawed. And they're like, well, here in China, yeah, we don't have elections, but guess what? Xi Jinping, you know, was picked out of a you know, the Chinese Communist Party, and he rose, the cream rose to the top of an 80 million person party. And it went through a series of tests. And, you know, he, he was in the running for, you know, 45 years. He had all this experience, you know, in his collective experience, he had already run through governorships of provinces bigger than most countries. So he had all this experience. Basically, the idea that in China, it may not be a democracy, but it's meritocratic, that that they don't get ruled by by chumps like Donald Trump or Obama, these you know, actors, media personalities who really don't know what they're doing. That was the idea. These are and the most dangerous thing is these are valid criticisms of democracy, but yeah. that doesn't justify totalitarianism or dictatorship. Yeah, exactly. Hundred percent agreed. Yeah, it's but but you give these to simple minded people and they just they process them like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense and yeah, I guess our system is probably better. Well, when you cut off external media and things like this and you basically raise people from babies only hearing this, of course they're going to be indoctrinated with that idea. It's going to be very hard to break them from that. 
honestly watching this, even to me, and I've completely, I've been in favor of democracy. And this, I mean, you need to think about it. Like people, Americans maybe don't make the rational choice sometimes. They don't, they don't ever go through the process of justifying to themselves why democracy is good. Mm-hmm. But this is the step that needs to be taken in every person's life. Why we prefer democracy instead of just mindlessly thinking about it. Yeah, for sure. And the arguments they make are compelling. And it's that's that's the frightening thing. Of course democracy is better. You cannot have accountability. That's the main thing, accountability. Yeah. yeah. But the, you know, the the idea when you look at these these democracies where you have so many problems, you have, you know, idiotic leaders, bad decisions, populism you know coups collapses uh, flawed elections bad policies demagoguery and you say oh why wouldn't we want a meritocratic system where a group of really wise smart people make long-term planning decisions for us and we don't have to worry about politics or leave politics through the the lower castes of people Mm -hmm. it's compelling yeah i can under uh, yeah it's definitely compelling I'll send you some. And they, the worst thing is the propaganda. They're very, very smart how they do it. And they basically make the rest of the world look like it's a childlike system. That the Chinese are the wisest. That this is, this is the true wisdom. Yeah. And, and that basically the rest of us are just, you know, it's, they compare. Basically, the, the implicit comparisons are that democracy is like, Jongo Yoshiha, like the you know, like the like a voting show, mm-hmm. like American Idol or something. Yeah, that voting is basically something, something you do for fun, like the, the a, a childish entertainment tool, but it's not a way to run a government. Yeah. Ridiculous. Any thoughts? I mean, I don't have a ton of. I mean, I generally agree with you. I don't know, like exactly know what to say. I would just say that yeah, yeah, I, I pretty much agree. I mean, they. It's it is it, it is slightly compelling, but I think your point is is very valid. I much agree with it that there's no accountability in those places. I mean, unless you could argue that there could be, I guess, if like you know the whole there could be, but there's nothing to ensure that there will be. Yeah, no, unlike exa- a democracy, exactly, they- exactly. And yeah, and I mean, we it's been shown. What was it? I sent you it today. Um, I forget where it was in China, but they were protesting like them putting up. A, pow- a power plant like really close to this residential area and basically like these people protesting basically got beaten and arrested and things like that so you're not allowed to you're not allowed to protest <laughs> and i mean we've seen that with uh in xinjiang like you know basically even if your family members who live in another country protest like you might get put in a camp just for that yeah. reason so that's yeah, scary man scary stuff one other thing that i i there's there's a few academic books I've read in the past few months about um, the conception that basically online trolling is a, is an aspect of Chinese censorship, which which you could you could agree with or not. But one thing that it mentioned is is that a lot of these, especially the probably the ones we encounter, that a lot of these they look like umao dan, but they're what they call them is voluntary umao dan. They're not they're not actually sanctioned by the government. A lot of mm-hmm. them are Chinese people who who are actually living abroad, who have very strongly nationalistic views, and they'll go out of their way to defend the government by their own volition. Mm. But they're actually not attached. They, they don't, aren't necessarily attached to the government. They don't need to be, that they act by their own volition. Kind of like, like I do when I see these people, I just respond for my own volition. I mean, the U.S. Mm-hmm. government doesn't pay me to like post hate on, on the YouTube you know, comment boards. And this is like very similar, a very similar structure. But there are so many, you know, overseas Chinese around the world that yeah. it looks like an army. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, when you have these sorts of, like, they have, you know, basically two two main media sources. I mean, there are obviously other ones, but they're all they're all party controlled, um, state owned, or uh, they follow the party line very closely. Like, when you have just a handful of these things putting out this putting out the stories, and that's the only thing that they read basically for, you're obviously they're going to react the, all the same way i should send you these books if you want what, what's interesting is that especially for the overseas chinese communities mm-hmm. a lot of them get their news from wechat because they have these wechat news groups mm-hmm. and stuff like that where they'll post these articles yeah 
and even amongst these groups there's there's a as with most Chinese media it's not that the, the there is a censor board with Chinese media but they're not super active mm -hmm. basically they have a set of rules and most of them voluntarily comply to avoid being censored because being censored typically means that they'll also undergo some kind of censure or they have to pay a fine or somebody will go to jail yeah. they self-censor yeah, they, they, self the, they know what the consequences are <laughs> they know what the consequences are but the the one of the bigger issues too is that from what I've heard that a lot of these the orders from the censor board are not clear that they're vague and that basically they'll give themselves extra leeway in order to have because because it's so vague, because they're not exactly sure where the lines are drawn, mm -hmm. they'll self censor themselves even more to avoid being offensive in any way. Yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting that it's we we consider it so monolithic and like they have these clear lines, but sometimes the lines aren't clear, and that actually makes the censorship more more strong. Yeah, that, uh, for sure. And I mean, that's the thing is because of the the potential outcome, the potential punishment just so disproportionate to the to the quote-unquote crime or the misdeed that i think that obviously they're going to try to censor themselves as much as possible like I mean, losing a media license i mean stuff like that i mean going going to prison for saying something i mean getting dis yeah getting disappeared having your family members jobs threatened like you know the list goes on and on but yeah it's it's ridiculous man and so of course people are going to be scared and people are going to censor themselves from what I heard, it doesn't often reach that point with, with professional journalists. It does often with activists, but with professional journalists, usually it would be like pushing the envelope a little, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it takes a few times. You'll get a few talking to's from the police mm -hmm. before they start messing with your life. But, yeah, you very quickly end your career, and maybe your family will end up in prison. But yeah. So, but that's I mean, who you work for. Even, even, even going as far as like getting demoted, it, that's that's insane. Like to think that like if in the U.S. you criticize the government slightly, and so you get you you know your salary is cut by a third. Like that's absurd. Of course, it's different, but it, you could you could liken it to in the United States if you had some article that wasn't properly sourced and you got sued, that you'd probably get demoted if you even if you were. A, pretty high level reporter you could i mean yeah but it's not the same thing it's not the same thing as printing facts like if you were to talk about how there are concentration camps in xinjiang like you would definitely be you'd probably be more than demoted but what the government say would even, say even, even they, if you they, were i'm not defending them at all but they they present it under the same thing they'd say you're you're publishing or something unsubstantiated information probably that's what the government would say yeah, I mean, but, but, it, but it, okay, but say you don't say concentrate. Even if you, I think I feel like even if you talk about it and you say, you know, whatever the conditions are, like oh, someone or if for instance you post these stories about people, people protesting in other countries and then their family members getting sent to jail, I think that would also uh, that would qu quickly get taken down, and you yeah, would be for reprimanded sure. for that, which is just f mere stating of facts. Well, what they'd say is that you're. That those stories aren't true, that you're publishing false fictions. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's fine, but I'm, that's why I'm, I'm making that comparison to say that, like, yeah. it's just not true. <laughs> like, that that's that's the scary part about China, man. Is that that's how quickly it, it you're you're totally under the control. Not to mention now that they have all this, you know, Face Plus Plus, all these softwares that are not only in Xinjiang now, but pr proliferating across the the entirety of China. They basically can track every movement you make and every purchase you make. My, I have a student that went to China recently, and they said, "Oh well, like e you know, you buy everything via WeChat Pay or or you know some other app." Yeah. And it's just yeah. like that is that's another way to control you. Like they they that way they can follow every every single thing you buy. Not well, to mention for them, it's a matter of convenience. That's how the way they consider it. And that's the frightening thing about the, like the Facebook Libra thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, that's that's what I told my student. I was like, yeah, that's I, I prefer like uh, that student is like not very political. Um, and I think they're going to actually go to school in Beijing. So maybe I should talk with them more about that. But I was basically like, yeah, I prefer to use cash. <laughs> like, I why would they want to go to school in Beijing? 
Um, they, I don't want to give too much information away on them, but they give do. Give me their first and last name, their address, their parents' <laughs> occupations, and their phone number. They study a specific subject where they have a very good school in Beijing for that. It's like a famous, like world famous school. Oh, so. Marxism. Uh huh. Yeah, that's it. Weird. Yeah. So I sent you the article today about well, oh, they're trying to poach engineers did you read it oh yeah i know i very not, long i didn't read it i was at work when you sent it to me i don't know how accurate the numbers are because some of these salaries are to me they're unheard basically they're saying that engineers in shinju like a like a mid-level and again i don't know i mean the manager i don't know how the management chains work here but uh-huh. like an engineering manager in shinju makes like two million nt a year and the engineers that i know here make at best 500k a year in Gaoshan working for big companies a year really yeah i, but I don't know i wonder Maybe. if that's a, if that's an average of all engineers cuz then it's going to be there's outliers they're going to drag that across but i don't know i guess i don't know the exact salary of i i teach two engineers and they both it depends on the engineering subfield as well i yeah, know kim was true. making 30k yeah in the north yeah it's a, Definitely depends, but I would be civil interest, engineer. Inter- interested to look more into those numbers. I think the engineer that I spoke with was a, uh, they're a mechanical engineer, but they work for a, uh, I think it's an integrated circuit manufacturer. So they're doing, yeah, I mean, they're doing chip, chip fabrication. Mm-hmm. So it's not that different. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mine, the two I have, uh, well, I know one works at a semiconductor. Where? Factory in Shinju. Oh, in Shinju. And they live in Longtan. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, close to Longtan. They don't live in Longtan, but yeah, close. Interesting. Yeah. The other one, also work, the there. other one also works in Shinju and lives close to Longtan. Anyway, I mean, you can see with young people that they're getting poached over, that they see that there's more, supposedly more opportunity. The salary is not much higher. For mm-hmm. Depends on what the job is. Depends on what the job yeah. is. For engineers, especially chip engineers, it might be a lot higher, but... Talking, I mean, remember talking to Adrian and stuff like that. The salary is higher, but the salary is not that much higher that it would justify. Mm-hmm. It's like an extra 300 US a month, something like that. So to justify moving away from your your home country and coming back like once a year, it's yeah. dubious for, but it depends. Maybe it's changing, but I, I mean, I don't know. The higher the wages go there, the less competitive this country, th- that country is. So yeah, in terms of manufacturing. Well, depending on how the trade war plays out, some of those some of those jobs may be moving elsewhere anyway. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, Donald Trump is Donald. Tr- oh my gosh, I can't. Uh. He's he's starting to potentially, and I everyone's arguing about this in the quote unquote, all these quote unquote China watchers on Twitter. They're arguing about it, but he kind of waffled on Huawei. He said that they might allow some non. Uh, things that are not national security threats to be traded with Huawei now. After I, yeah, I already heard that, that they out. can now buy U.S. components again, which is, I mean, the fact that he creates this national security thing, he meets with his his butt buddy for like a day, and then he just completely flip-flops. Well, we all knew. I mean, I a, anyone that knows Trump knows that's going to happen when she whispers sweet nothings in his ear. That's anyone that's all anyone has to do is just praise him a little bit and he will he will fall right in line which is the danger of having you know someone like that in office i hope when he loses next year the shame breaks his heart and he he wants to he goes away i'm just not going to say anything i'm he not going to say away. anything that's going to get the so- secret service on me <laughs> he just goes away i'd say that's enough for me if i just never hear about him again that's that's enough no, um, I want to hear his sentencing trial. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I would like to, yeah, see that. And as much as I would like to for him to go into solitary, I, I oppose solitary confinement, so I, I guess I can't wish for that. But, yeah, man, it's... Uh, because it's, of what he's done, this, has, this is not a partisan thing. This is what he's done to our democracy, and this is how he's aided and abetted the enemies of the United States like only a traitor would. Right. He's a traitor to America. And I still have people defending him to me on Twitter. And it's just... It's absurd to me how these people are so sycophantic. It's just... 
whatever he does. And don't get me wrong, I, I disagree with the people who are the exact opposite, who are oppose him on everything. Like, if Trump does it, it's bad. It's the same thing as Trump, with, that's how Trump is with Obama, and everyone knows that that's idiotic, so why, I don't know why you would just, you have to judge everything he does on his merits. But most of what I've judged him doing on his merits is idiotic. There's been a few decent things, but yeah, most of it is, is pretty bad. Nightmare. I, I started reading, it's like a short book from the Council of Foreign Relations. If, the title of it is, Why Trump's Foreign Policy is Not as Bad as Everyone Thinks It Is. Something uh. to that extent. And basically, I, it's, it does not like pull its punches. It's like Trump is an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. He flip-flops on everything, but the consequences actually might be good for America. That's the premise. Hmm. I need to finish that say what i think about that it's hard to say you should you should read it too it's a free book oh all right yeah i, I would send you the link i would yeah send that to me i'll be down to check it out uh yeah i don't know speaking of that i guess unless you have anything else to say about well, libra let's talk about libra what do okay you think? okay i don't know i think I, i'm just not a i'm not a huge fan of cryptos in general so i mostly yeah, ignore them you're probably more of a avid opponent than i am i kind of just don't care i'm not an opponent of crypto i'm an opponent of the marketization like the mass marketization of crypto the whole point of crypto is that it was supposed to be anonymous it was supposed to be to me low key uh -huh. and when you, you basically have the entire world trying to jump on it and it becomes like an investor favorite for for destroying a portfolio in 10 minutes that to me defeats the purpose of crypto crypto was supposed to be a transactional tool to to anonymize and democratize currency and you you've completely defeated the purpose when it's being bought by institutional investors and the mega corporations of the world jump on the bandwagon it's not this is not a crypto this is to me this is a digital currency controlled mm -hmm. by a mega corporation there's nothing crypto about it yeah for sure it's uh, also not anonymous because now one of the things in facebook's white paper was basically saying that this is the beginning of establishing an online digital identity so that they can track what people do online. Again, this is the opposite of crypto. This is the beginning yeah. of Orwellian thought control. Yeah. It's the same thing we talked about a little bit ago with China. It's like now they can track every single purchase. Those ads that they target are going to get even more specific. It's frightening. It's frightening. It and they want it. Yeah. It's not controlled by decentralized you know people all over the world it's controlled by a small group of board members sitting in a back room yeah and the fact that they want to displace the u.s dollar as you know the way we get paid i mean talk about like dystopian future where everything's controlled by a mega corporation this yeah. is literally the how it would start for real not to mention that's like that's like a throwback historically speaking to like plantation farmers like people basically getting paid in or or even company workers like getting paid in company uh co like company dollars basically they can only spend at the company store they only accept them there and then so that they that's how they keep you in a basically a, a type of pseudo slavery where you can't move out of the the company cuz they can control that you just have just enough money to stay in your terrible situation it's really bad man it is it's absolutely horrendous and the fact that anyone that anyone would buy into this as anything more than like like an alternative to Apple Pay or something like that. This is a payment mechanism through a private corporation. Yeah. This is not a currency. It's it's a toy. Yeah. Not to mention that I mean it it, it could be easily manipulated like some of the other you know e currencies for lack of a better term have exactly. been. And also that there's there's More easy. and there's no backing for this so what if what if facebook completely crumbles like they i mean they're obviously a very rich uh company but like who's to say that they don't get my spaced out and they just they crumble and then all of your money's gone well that's that's probably the best case that solution, doesn't happen but yeah but this is what they're trying to prevent that they control all your money so no that you know it doesn't matter what the, what happens in relative to the u.s dollar because you know, you start getting paid from your work in Libra instead of U.S. dollar. How are we going to let Facebook collapse? Yeah, that's that's a yeah, that's that's a, a, the whole other argument. It's just like that's that's even more horrifying to me. This is their this is their goal. This is their goal. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
it's very frightening from top to bottom. And the most frightening thing is that people don't realize that a lot of people don't realize this is not a cryptocurrency. This is a corporate currency. Mm. It's a corporate digital token masquerading as a currency. There's nothing crypto about it. There's nothing decentralized about it. The, the validation servers, all the hashing is done by Facebook. Mm-hmm. The, the value, first of all, the value is supposed to be pegged. They're like, oh, we're going to peg it, you know, so, so it'll have some stability. But the pegging process is opaque. What are they going to peg it to? Who knows? They could peg it to Facebook stock. They could peg it to some company that Mark Zuckerberg wants to invest the in. The Iraqi they dinar. They could peg it to what? The Iraqi dinar, you know? The Iraqi, who <laughs> knows? And, and this opens the door to, like, the worst pricing manipulation of any currency in human history. This is from top to bottom. Absolutely. Not crypto, not a good idea, not good for people, not good for anyone, yeah, it's, except Facebook. It's asinine. It's, this, it's really stupid. And I really hope that no one buys into it, but some people, some people so. will. I, I don't know. I have some hope that I don't, I don't know how many people are going to really buy into that because enough people already have enough distrust of Facebook. But go ahead. What it did to Bitcoin, though, like this, the same these Bitcoin armies, this cryptocurrency army of like institutional investors and people with more money than smarts, mm-hmm. and and the fact that it raised Bitcoin's value, like. 30 40 percent in a matter of a week mm-hmm. just shows that it ha- is having an effect yeah it's frightening it's frightening it shouldn't get any support from anyone honestly but it, what would you expect a bunch of you know corporate tools to do when they hear about this they're just having wet dreams about this stuff. <laughs> yeah exactly and man i've never seen a less human human than mark zuckerberg that guy i don't want to i don't want to insult his mental illness <laughs> on the podcast but. all right fair enough I don't know that he has mental illness, but he's just very, he's just very robotic. And just well, he's, okay, I'm, I'm not going to say right, anything right, before I get myself right, in trouble. We won't get, we won't get ourselves in trouble. Exercise restraint. All right, good, good idea. This is a bad idea. Before he becomes the president. Bad. I- <laughs> before we get forced disappeared in ten years. <laughs> when he comes to hear this podcast. It's all right. Well, by then, hopefully, we'll have, we'll have enough money to buy our own guerrilla army so we can hide out in the mountains of taiwan that would be very convenient <laughs> speaking of the mountains of taiwan i saw i saw a deer like a, not a not like a real deer like a a conch jack if you've ever heard of that animal which i hadn't heard i of that animal. have not no it's like a little like horned deer i saw it in the mountains yesterday it's like the size of a very very large house cat is it like a Maybe is it like, like a jackalope it's like two feet tall, and it was it was not that far, man. It was like by the zoo there, hmm. you know. Like it, the mountains are really, really deep in some places there. So, but this is the first time I've ever seen one in Taiwan. But apparently, it's endemic to large portions of Taiwan. At first, I thought it was a sika, like one of those rare deer. Uh-huh. But then I looked it up, and the sika are actually extremely rare, and they're only in Kanding. Oh, really? Yeah, I wish there were more of the, that sort of wildlife. But then again. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about that because deer are such a plague, like, from where I come from. like Monkeys are a plague here, and, like, I can tolerate the monkeys. I'd much rather have animals that aren't going to maul me for food <laughs> than... Yeah, it's true. Monkeys are a plague, well, man. The, the plague with deer is... The, the problem is, is they, them in the road. They get in the road. They also terrorize people's crops, but uh, they're also just... Man, they're so, like, stupid stupid for lack of a better word they just run out in the middle of the road and they don't understand what like lights are and stuff and that's why there's so many accidents in the countryside in america for with deer that's why a lot of people hunt is because they they feel like they need to quell that population this is the first time i've ever seen one yeah anywhere in taiwan so they're obviously not that prevalent or oh, not at all and that's why i was gonna that's why i was saying it's like i kind of wish there were more at the same time as i don't i yeah. don't want there to be too many because i've never i mean in Almost four years of being here, I've never seen any sort of deer in the wild here. I've been to Green Island. I've been, we've been, we've we've been camping and hiking in all kinds of different places. Yeah, basically all over. We've yeah. been to Kenting recently too. Like, yeah, they're they're rare. Yeah. Well, I think the sick of deer population is right now numbers no more than a thousand. So wow. I'd like to see one of those. That's crazy small. Yeah, we could we should go on a hike in there sometime. Of, instead of only the beaches, that would be nice. Maybe we could spot one. 
I'd be down. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to get pics of one. Uh, be hard. Yeah, I'm sure. The world I'm sure. where we saw this one, because the t- the forest is so dense there. Mm-hmm. I would even if I had brought like 400 ISO film, I don't think I would have been able to capture really? it. Really? It was so dark. Yeah. Under the canopies, it just gets really dark really fast. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. In these mountains, it's just like a rainforest, man. It's beautiful, but it's definitely hard to see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, do I think we need to do? I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room, the the uh, debates, man. I think we need to talk about that. Unless you, I made notes, oh. but my phone toasted in the last few minutes. That's. I, I'm really sorry to hear that, but I'm glad because I don't have my notes either. So we had to go off the dome. I've watched oh. I've watched both debates two times ish now. So hopefully I can remember some stuff. The biggest thing for me that I was shocked about is is how the Democratic Party has moved on mainly illegal immigration. Mm-hmm. That it's gone from being in support of DACA and being in support of Dreamers. This kind of stuff mm-hmm. to basically supporting complete amnesty, and now including uh, undocumented migrants in the national health care system, which as of yet doesn't even exist. Yeah, that to me was pretty. Shocking. I think part of that is because more on the democratic side, people want to be empathetic, and especially for a lot of these people who are more like establishment types. It's easy for them to say that because it's again it's not it, it's not even a reality and even if they implemented like Bernie Sanders plan for instance for Medicare for all that doesn't even go into full effect for 4 years. It's a 4 year process. So they they're just making promises that they never have to fulfill. It's not about the policy because realistically that would never happen. Mhm. I do, I don't think it would. I don't think this it, anyone would what it means is that this is going to be held against them on the debate stage with Donald Trump in a year's time. That he's going to say, you are in favor of providing medical care to illegal migrants when when even Americans don't have access to it. Mm-hmm. That's going to be thrown back in their faces in, in a year's time. Probably. I mean, that's if Trump is, you know, cogent enough to even say that. But yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's a very... It's not a forward-thinking thing, and I don't think that it's necessarily even – I don't think it's really good policy either. I was just surprised. I was surprised how the party has – it doesn't actually seem like they've shifted that much on you know, Medicare for All on a lot of – well, I, first I of would all, say a, it has shifted a lot on Medicare for All because a couple years ago, Bernie was basically the only person talking about maybe Elizabeth Warren, and now – it was like eighty five percent of the candidates are in favor of it. Yeah, but what are, what are but what do they specifically mean for it? That's a good. By it? That's, that's, that's a that's, good point. That is a good point. That's the crux of it because they talk about it, but then they're like, I mean, what exactly does it mean? It doesn't mean a public option because the public option is is a very old idea, and that's to me, I don't understand why make the distinction between making private health care illegal or not. Do you have any thoughts okay. on that? I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, I wanted to say something. Flash I point. wanted to say something about that. I think that it Go is ahead. a huge mistake for people like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders to – that is, first of all, terrible question. When they asked that question, I was so mad. That is a dumb question. That is a – they did it – but they did it on purpose. They want to – They always They want it. to they have these got you questions later. They should – neither of them should have raised their hand or they – I, I would have really liked if someone like Bernie was like, that's a that's a terrible question. You need to call them out. Don't – and also, side point, stop thanking these people for their questions. Don't thank Chris Cuomo for his question. I don't want to hear you say, oh, thanks. That's a great question, Chris. Like, that's so fake. That's fake shit. Was Chris Cuomo wasn't there. I know. I'm just using it as an example. Like, in these debates and things <laughs> like that, don't do that, please. Thank you. Anyway, but that's a very bad answer. What they should have said was – no, I'm in because even Sanders' plan is not it doesn't eliminate private insurance. There's still supplemental insurance in Taiwan um, uh, that has a, you know a nationalized healthcare system. It is still legal for you to purchase supplemental care, but you don't need it. That's the point is that it's not necessary. And that's what the, all of them should have said. 
They should have said, this is a dumb question and it's irrelevant because if you understand what a national health care system is, if you understand what Medicare for all is, you don't need supplemental care unless you're getting some sort of cosmetic surgery because you will get care when you're sick. The idea that I basically heard is that they're trying to use it to supersede private health care plan as opposed to some of these other Democrats. It sounded like basically they, they want there to be a public option, but if people like if people are like oh i really like my etna triple a plus plan that i pay seven thousand dollars a month for you know i'd rather keep this than pay into a government-run system with death panels that these kinds of people could keep their plans not supplemental like fully fully fledged healthcare plans that are ridiculously priced that would compete against a government-run plan yeah, that's fine. Okay, you know I, mean? I would say, yeah, if you want to do that, then that's fine. But no one is going to do that except for maybe, like, some super rich people. It's, it's, that's what no it sounds one, like Bernie's but, argument yeah, is. Yeah, so but no one like That you need everyone to pay in, basically. It, that and that's you, kind of – You can't have people doing it's that. It's kind of true, but at the same time, like, the U.S. just has an insane amount of money, and they, that's why these – Questions of how are you going to pay for it? Not to mention Medicare is it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. Go read my Medicare for All article. It's cheaper. It doesn't matter. They will Fact. be paying. L- th- they will be paying less. They will be paying much less. And that's the thing. It was the same thing with the question that they asked. They asked him basically, "How are you going to pay for it?" And he's like, "Because th- that's not what they asked. They ask, oh, are you going to raise taxes on the middle class?'" Oh, is your is it your Medicare for all plan gonna end, raise tax on the middle class? And he was like, "Yeah, but they don't have to pay a fucking five thousand dollar deductible. They don't need to pay a monthly fee to some middleman that does like pay uses forty percent of their revenue to do advertising. It's absurd. Yeah, I, There's I it's so stupid, and, man. But his answer, his answer made him look like an honest guy. Honestly, that answer it didn't make him look bad at all. Yeah, I, I, I do. I will say that he, I don't think that the debate hurt him, but I don't think he, it did. It didn't. I, he, but I, he went up in his likability. But I all and and it went up in his support. I think actually, by a couple percent. Yes, it's true. But I think that he could have done better. And I'm I I'm probably harder on him because he's the guy I support right now, um, and almost one hundred. Like I would say ninety nine percent. He is the guy that I will vote for in the next election. But. I think there are a few places where he could have done a little bit better, but that being said, like, I think, yeah, I agree. I think his answer was okay. It was good. It was fine. I was also, I was surprised at how hard Democrats are going on China now, which is, which is refreshing. It's good. Basically, like, China was not even an issue, like, you think back to 2015, Mm -hmm. 2016, and now it's, like, at the top. That, say what you want about Donald Trump, and I say a lot of things about Donald Trump, but, but the fact that he's brought... The China issue, the, the issue of China's rise to the forefront of our conception of our security policy is pretty valid. It's good. It's yeah, important. that's definitely a thing that he's done that has been beneficial for the world. Definitely for Until America. he turns around next week and says, you know, we announced a, a 50-year military alliance with China <laughs> to sell them all our nuclear weapons. You know, if he waited until right before the election and then did a whole 180-degree f- uh, f- turn on China, that could be a good thing. Because he would lose a lot of support, and the Democrats, because they're so reactionary sometimes in terms of Trump, they would be like, China is our number one enemy. And already, like you said, like a number of them, when they're asked – again, I also don't like this question um, of you know, give me a one-word answer on what's the biggest threat to, to the U.S. Um, but a, <laughs> yeah. a number of them said China. Straight up, just China or China slash global warming, China slash blah 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 blah, you know. China slash Chris Cuomo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I I'm I'm heartened by that too, but I think it's not enough. And I, I I tweeted something out on Free China Post. I was basically like, you know, I actually I don't think I even gave them credit, which I probably should have gave them credit for for that. But I was like, you know, pretty upset to hear literally zero democrats say anything about chinese concentration camps you know it's not a hot issue in the u.s it needs to be though it needs to be and if you want to do it you more u.s centric you can talk about that and you can also talk about the fact that christian churches are are getting ramped up on in china too and i think that that's something that we should also care about it's all religious freedom and freedom of speech so if you want to the hot issues in the democratic party right now are they're, they're trying right now because they're appealing to primary voters in the Democratic Party who are typically 
more leftists yeah, than the um, average voter. Maybe. So yeah, they're okay. focusing on the issues that are big on the far left, which right now are like climate change, Medicare for all, Medicare for all. Uh, I mean, that's big for everyone. I feel like, but that's yeah, it's true. I mean, it's got over, I believe, over seventy percent of support, and over fifty percent even for Republicans. So, yeah, it's true. gun control. They mentioned a lot, but. Gun control only gets big after a big shooting. Well, that's once a week in the U.S., though. A big, I mean, like a big, big shooting, like 30 plus. <laughs> that's, Cause that's once a month. That's what it means in, like, the, yeah, the modern U.S., I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's true. That's, I, you're, yeah, I, I, it's true. But, I mean, the gun, the gun debate is so difficult. <laughs> it's, it's so, com- what com- what it's so complex, man. Like, I mean... I've I've held beliefs where I was I mean when I was obviously when I was in high school I was for yeah. you know fuck it let's make RPGs legal and in college You're I was in, in college I was like no like we should fucking go into people's houses and f- like physically take their take all of their guns at one point that was a very short point but um but now yeah I, I mean I think we we at least need to have a a background check and licensing. I think it should. You know, you, I, I don't. I forgot who made this point in the debates, but someone said, you know, you need a you need a license to drive a car. You should have a license to own a gun. And I think that's that's a good point. I think I. That's a pretty old argument. Yeah, it's no, no, no. I know, I know. But that's what I'm saying. I just wanted to say that someone had said it in the debates, but I forgot who it was. But yeah, no. I and I think I'm definitely on board for that. I think there's common sense gun reform that we could do, like you know, getting rid of assault quote unquote assault weapons and things like that and so do you support an assault weapons because i'm not sure how i I, for the general i don't know what it would what it's going to cost democrats in the general to me that's not the biggest issue i think that like yes that is because a lot of the mass shootings lately have been with semi-auto pistols and pistols pistols kill a great number more people and a big part of that is suicides but um yeah but yeah so what I, yeah, and so what I would say is, yeah, I would, I definitely wouldn't make that my number one issue. But if you know, if we're gonna talk about it, if we're gonna have that discussion, I think that the, the you could do things because right now it's legal for people to own automatic weapons if they get certain licenses, and I think that's what you do is you, okay, you want to own any gun, you get a basic license. Uh, you want to own. What does that entail, though? I mean, what does that specifically entail? Um, so that's that's, that's, that's co- yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Is this is, this is a ve- this is a very complicated issue? Yeah, but because of the supremacy clause, you can make it a federal law. Hmm. You can set federal guidelines that you say, okay, you can make your other, you can make it more difficult in your state, but you cannot make it less difficult than what we say. And we're going to line this out, and this is this is this is what the federal government says. And because if you want to call yourself a constitutionalist, like most of these Republicans want to say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a constitutionalist. I follow the Constitution. Well, that's, you know, supremacy clause says that we get to say what the fuck you get to do. And I think that that's, that's a legitimate, obviously, and a very legally sound argument. What did you think of Biden? And what did you think of Kamala Harris? Because those are the two people that are getting talked most about. I think Biden bombed. I think he did terrible. Really? I think he did terrible. I think, I, th- I think he got a lot of pressure, but I thought he did okay. I thought he came out looking better than before to me. But that, I think I, at the I, beginning, I agree with you. I think at the beginning he looked okay for some of his answers, but I think especially when Kamala went after him, he looked like an idiot. He was bumbling I, and see, I felt the opposite. Really, I felt yeah, he bumbled a little, but I felt like he looked like he was being attacked, and it made Kamala just look like a prosecutor. I th- I think he did get that. He got that sting in because she was like, you know you're friends with racists and he's like yeah you're a fucking cop and i was a public defender which is a good line like that's a good comeback but i don't i don't think that he's appealing to anyone i think i think that he appeals to that's why maybe it it resonated with me more than you uh he appealed to the the side of the democratic party that thinks that the ability to negotiate to get a deal that both parties will agree to that will pass is more important than than holding the line on what you believe is perfect it's better to get something good than nothing perfect Mm -hmm. and for me that's that's really my my mo when i think about politics yeah i agree with but see i agree with that but i i think i have less faith in uh you know the these sorts of over the line things because the republicans just won't 
they're not going to do anything. I mean, Mitch McConnell said he will not pass anything if he still maintains a Senate majority. When Mitch McConnell next could die day, at any time. He could, but it doesn't. Ancient. There's a lot of it, that's that's a sentiment that flows throughout the Republican Party. I don't. I think a lot of them are just. If the Democrats propose it, then we're going to. I mean, my go-to argument, <clears throat> not argument. My go-to example of this is when Obama tried to pass a right-wing health care plan, and how many Republicans voted for it? Literally zero. No Republicans yep. voted for Obamacare, which is Romney Care. It's a it's a right wing heritage created heritage fund created. Plan. I I get you, I get you. But Mitch McConnell also has overseen the Republican Party in the Senate for for the better part of a uh, a decade, and he's also accomplished nothing legislatively yeah. for the Republican Party other than a tax cut. It's there's no guarantee that he that he's going to continue to be the Senate Majority Leader in the future. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's a fair enough point, but. Like I'm saying, the I, Republican I Party think there are probably – Go ahead. Go ahead. Other, than the, other than the judicial picks and the tax cuts, they really don't have a lot to show for such a transformative leader so that they think they elected in Trump. The, like this has been legislatively a, a relative failure mm-hmm. for the Republican Party. Yeah, I would agree. I'd say, I, I, do, I would say that the judicial thing is huge though. That's huge. It is, but you heard what Bernie said. Wow, yeah, I've yeah. never even heard that. Before. I hadn't oh, heard that either. God. That was a gr- that was a very interesting point that he said. We should explain that for people listening. He basically said that he thinks that constitutionally he would be able to rotate judges off of the Supreme Court to other federal judgeships, and that was I was like, because he said he doesn't agree with court packing, which I I kind of agree with him. I don't know exactly where I sit. Like, how, what do you feel about court packing? I'm not sure. I okay. honestly don't know. All right, that's that's that. kind of what I, that's kind of where I am because I I want to say yes, fuck it, let's pack the court. But at the same time, because if you pa- uh, here's the two things that I waffle between. I'll try to say it very quick so I don't waste a bunch of time. But I I, I think okay, if you pack the court and you pass a bunch of good legislation like an FDR, you are gonna thirty seconds. You are gonna ride the wave super fast. Uh, you are gonna have a bunch of people that support you. Your you're gonna, time is up. You're gonna fuck it. <laughs> you're gonna get a bunch of support and you trust me. You'll have time to talk soon. <laughs> And we need to get to everyone else on the stage here. <laughs> we want Marianne Williamson to talk, okay? But uh, but my other feeling is that if you don't pass, your time is up. If you sir. don't pass enough, shut up. If you don't pass enough, then you're gonna. It's gonna go back to the Republicans, and I mean, at some point, it's probably you know, there's gonna be another Republican president, and they're gonna do the same thing, or what? You know, they're gonna pack it even more, or, or find some when other. You say way pack to it, you, you. I mean, add add justices. I mean. I think that packet packet is relatively meaningless. You're going to pick people who basically lean judicially on the same side as yourself. Mm-hmm. Why would you pick someone who disagrees with you? And you can pick more or less moderate. But but to be honest, if you actually look at how the justices lean, it's very difficult to predict based on their previous decisions how they'll go in the future on a lot of these. That you have people like like John Roberts. John Roberts is actually fairly fairly conservative, but he's not as conservative perhaps as some of the others or Neil Gorsuch the weird people who who lean weird ways and you don't always know that until after they've already been in the court for a few years so it's true it's not true so, clear. so that's not so that's clear. probably why I would lean more towards if if Bernie can get that done I think that that's a very interesting strategy yeah I think that lifetime tenure I think that the current system of basically just them waiting till they die or like waiting until they have a president who's the same party as them mm-hmm. and i think lifetime tenure in general is a little bit problematic they probably should should have long like it, you, the supreme court in taiwan for instance mm-hmm. they should there should probably some be some kind of limit and let's say 20 years like not something short maybe 25 years i think would be appropriate mm-hmm. and and that's it it's still, I mean, yeah, it's still a, basically a generation, though. So it's still going to be, I mean, it's going to yeah, be Yeah, but not powerful. two generations. It's true. It's not three generations it's like we have now. It's true. That's we have people appointed by Reagan that are still in there, for fuck's sake. Like, yeah. before I was born. It's very true. It's very true. And, I, yeah, I, but I, back to the basics, I I agree with you that, back to basics. that uh, yeah, that's a, that was, that also shocked me. Oh, I hear you got some. Sirens there. There were just some sirens here. I heard that too. It's great. We live in. We do live in a very safe country. Besides, 
in spite of all the sirens that we hear. Mine was just telling parked cars to move, so. Your, I don't know what this one is. Yours sounds, sounds like an ambulance, but. Actually, okay, to be honest, we don't have any from Reagan, but we do have one from HW. Sorry. Yeah, one from HW. Still. Probably my least favorite there. That's still, like. Actually, my least favorite maybe is Kavanaugh, but, but Clarence Thomas is definitely one of my least yeah, favorites. Yeah, he's. Clarence Thomas sucks, but yeah, Kavanaugh is probably my least favorite, I'd have to say. The rest are Alito. I don't really know much about Alito. I should send you... I keep telling you I'm going to send you all these things. <laughs> Let me send them to you as, as I remember them. All right. Is there anything else that you saw from the from the debates that struck... Or anyone else that you thought... Anything that you saw or anything... Who is Marianne Williams? She's the fucking winner of the debates. She is the winner of the debates, Ari. Don't you know? She won it. Where did she come from? Who said that? Did anyone say that? (laughs) Only people jokingly on Twitter, I think. She's, um... Were they joking? I assume they were. I assume they were. If they weren't, I hope that they get whatever mental health checkup that they need. Because that's... Oh, I found her unbearable most of the time i found a lot of them unbearable the guy who kept being like new blood new blood virgin blood oh, like yeah. that one, really i was like come on like oh uh, yeah his stop being with, such an ageist yeah that's the thing is he he got he, i think that was a very bad look for him was that was that swalwell or was that yeah swalwell okay swalwell. that was swalwell well swalwell just, they didn't even go to his face i just hear him virgin blood virgin blood <laughs> He, from the back of the stage, he was, I, he was, yeah. That was a bad. He, he, he. That was his moment where he was trying to step up, and it made him look like an idiot. I think almost everyone that saw that thought he that he looked bad. I, I've seen multiple people's takes that they thought it was bad, and I thought it sounded, yeah, it sounded one. It sounded ageist. I don't always like that term, um, and I agree that like, yeah, young people should be more politically involved, but. That doesn't mean that he, just because he's younger, he's got a better idea. And I don't think that Biden's retort to that was great, but I still think that he came out looking a lot better than Swalwell there. I, I tend to agree with you. Yeah, that was a that was that was a dumb exchange. Also, I, I you asked about Kamala and Biden earlier, and I do think I think Kamala looked a lot better than I expected her to, and yeah. that yeah. made me sad. Because I don't really like her, and I don't trust her policies. Because she has changed so much recently. But at the same time, I will say that they're doing some weird birther shit with her now. Where they're like saying that she's not black, and maybe she wasn't born oh, in yeah. America. That That's bad. Don't do that. That's, that's stupid. Anyone doing that is an idiot. But at the same time, I don't agree with her, and I don't want her. I, w- I don't want to vote for her. So let's also not, you know, let's not support her. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, Gillibrand. Gillibrand, the fa- she was so one-sided when she said, I'm the only one with the pl-. – like – Yeah. She kept referring to these these very specific concrete plans, but I felt like her biggest failure is that she didn't give specifics on what any one of these plans entailed. Yeah. Unfortunately. It didn't seem like it at least. I didn't hear too many specifics of her. What I would say is she is another one that I thought did better than I expected. I expect her to come out and be completely flat. And she actually pushed for, um, you know, obviously it's like very pl- kind of platitude and stuff. But she pushed for some very progressive policies. And I think she looked a lot more left than she probably even really is. Um, but I sh- yeah, she did look pretty left. Yeah, she she was one that surprised me and actually s- looked a lot better than I thought she would. I thought she would come out and basically say nothing and look like a, you know, just a hack, basically like a, a you know, we can't use the word centrist anymore, but like a you know, corporate hack, basically. What else? I mean, there's so there were so many issues that touched so many things. I really booty uh, booty I'm judge just... booty judge got slapped around a little bit. Yeah, I really. They played a lot of identity politics in these debates. They're like, as as the only African American, we're gonna ask you this. As the youngest person here, I have the yeah, you know, I, yeah. I have the ability to say this. Yeah. As one of the only women on this stage, yeah. I have the ability to say this. Yeah. You know? It's true. And as the only one who served in the armed forces, you know, I have this special experience. As the only one who's been a prosecutor, like yep. and not only down to like these you know, every little aspect of identity. Mm-hmm. And I suppose that's typical of debates, you know, this, this experiential thing. Like I've lived these, I've lived this way, I've been in these shoes, so I understand something better. But 
Well, and even the questions, man. They it's they tiring. they question Bernie. They, they, do you remember the question where they asked him? They said like, "Oh, you said like people shouldn't look at like your age or or you know the race or gender of the person they when they're take voting." The worst questions to ask him on purpose. They're such always because that's what they hate. Bernie mainstream media hates Bernie. They do not want him because they know that he challenges that the corporate ideology. So they will do everything they can to make him look as bad as they possibly can. They they are a stat. They are literally they are the establishment. So they're going to carry the, the the hosts are going to carry water for them. And what I wish he would have said is he said I wish he would have turned it back around on them and been like Yeah, I don't think people should play identity politics. But are you against the first Jewish president? That would be historic for the Jewish population. Don't you support Israel? Do you hate Israel? Like what are you talking about? Like. Don't you support the first Jewish president? This is ridiculous. Why are you attacking me for this? I just want someone, you know, I just want it to be fair and, and, and unbiased. I want it to be based on policies. But if you want to talk about identity, well, I'm the, I would be the first Jewish president. Don't you think that would be a historical marker in our country? There was another, there was another Jewish person that I think, right? Um, is, I don't remember which, the first one or the second one. Are you talking about de Blasio? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Just kidding. Hey, actually, uh, here's another thing is... De Blasio performed better than I thought, but I I also thought that there was a, a number of times where he looked really stupid. For someone pulling at like what zero percent or one percent or whatever, I was I wasn't expecting him to even say anything. But he was really he's really trying to play like progressive, even though he's not that progressive. I thought, yeah, I don't know what. To, what why are you saying he's not progressive? I mean, he his New York policies are mostly like weird like pseudo social policies like oh i'm gonna ban big gulps and like stuff like that and like it's just it, it, it's, it's not, not a good idea uh, no i don't think so i i'm not in ban big gulps, no i'm not in favor of that let people have their freedom increase public health like big gulps for every <laughs> american 1000 big gulps per year uh. we we'll call it the freedom <laughs> dividend <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's right. The freedom, the big gulp dividend. Also, oh, here's another thing. Andrew Yang. Oh, yeah. Terrible. Yeah, he, he fell asleep. Terrible fell asleep. performance. Oh, did you hear that he, he said um, that his mic got cut? He's, he was, oh. like, talking to people after the base, like, my mic, like, they were cutting my mic. And, just, and there's a video of him, literally, when, like, three people are arguing, he's, like, raising his hand. He's like, mm, uh, teacher. Teacher, I have something to input. Um, I'm going to give everyone a thousand dollars. Teacher, teacher, uh, 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 as long as they don't take social security anymore, um, I'll give them a thousand dollars. Please pay attention to me, please, teacher. Just like, oh, you're so sad, man. That's so sad. I saw Bernie raising his hand at one point though, too, instead of instead of yelling. It's true, but Bernie didn't cry afterwards and say like oh you know like no one talked like you know they cut my mic and maybe they did nobody talked to me it's because they think because i'm trying to start a revolution <laughs> here the fucking corporatists they cut my mic they think that i'm the, the, the ideas that i have they're not important enough this is ridiculous and we're going to start the revolution yeah i don't i i don't know and maybe maybe his mic was cut and if it was then that's bullshit but at the same time he even in the stuff he said, he looked incredibly weak. I think he has nothing to offer the American people. The UBI stuff, I think, is interesting. I think we need to have conversations about UBI. But other than that, I don't think he has anything to offer the American people. And I think he's also like a libertarian in Democrat clothing. He's definitely a libertarian. He even mentioned libertarians. He mentioned appealing to libertarians. Yeah, so. and he's, he's gone on a number of odious YouTube channels recently. Um a few, a couple at least, um, that I think are basically charlatan shows where they pretend like they really care about you know left right discussion and things like that, but they're really just right right wingers and in hiding. So it's annoying to me, and I think he needs to take his Yang Bang somewhere else. Yang Bang. You know they call it they call themselves the Yang Gang online. It's like hashtag Yang Gang. It's actually Yang, for the record. Yeah, first of all, Yang. So Yang Gang doesn't work as well if you know how to actually speak Chinese. Also, has he said anything about Taiwan? No, he only talked about uh, getting closer to China so that we can cooperate with them on climate change. Yeah, and AI. He also talked about AI in China. And other things. Yeah. Well, f yeah. F That's what he said. And other things. 
And, not, you know, not, not human not, rights. Not, not, you know, I mean, they have concentration camps, but, like, you know, we should probably be, like, friends with them, you know, because, like, the technology and stuff. Fuck you, Andrew Yang. No, I... I think he I, – I am glad that he's bringing the UBI to the forefront, but that's – I think that's the only positive thing that his campaign is really bringing forward. I don't know, man. A thousand big gulps a year is not going to solve our problems. Like, It'll make you happy, though, you know? It's a big, a big gulp. Three, that's, like, that's like almost three big gulps a day. It's good, man. It's not bad. I'm not totally against it. Three big gulps a day would cost – only a thousand dollars a year. That's hard to pay. that's hard to fathom. You're saying a thousand big gulps a year. You didn't say a th- yeah. That's I, three big gulps a day. That's about three big gulps a day would only cost you a thousand dollars a year. No, it costs you. Ma- it would cost you more than a thousand dollars. How right? much is a big gulp? That's a good question. It depends where you are. It depends if you're, like in New York, it's more than if you're in. Well, okay, so let's obviously the the who lives in New York. Uh, only a couple people, but exactly. Um. I don't know. I don't know. What is in what is considered a big gulp? Is that 40, 44 ounces? I would say I'm not sure. See, these are all questions we need answered, man. And where is Andrew Yang with our answers about our big gulps? Nowhere. He's raising his hand quietly on the side of the stage. But, man, I'm excited to see some of these Republican debates. If they, if they even... Well, they're they, not going to have Republican debates. They should. Well, they're not going to. There's people trying to run against Trump trying to replace him who was it that was trying to run against him i forgot Pro- Kasich? maybe some mike pence someone who oh, yeah, obviously not mike pence but someone who would get slapped around by trump i would never insult my father <laughs> <laughs> the only the only real dad in america is bernie sanders he's america's dad but is there anything yeah, i'm trying to think of any other things that stuck out to me in the debates or people that I thought did really well or really poorly. It's hard to say, oh, 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 man. We missed the big one. What the fuck with that weird putting Spanish in and shit? The fuck was that? That was awkward as hell. Who, who, and why are you being so, so hating? I'm all for speaking Spanish, but like, Beto and Cory Booger speaking Spanish, like it's clear pandering, man. Like, I'm okay. I'm okay with people speaking Spanish at the debate, but it all looked so fake, and I, we don't have a national language in the United States, and I'm surprised Biden didn't speak Ukrainian and Chinese so he could support his son. <laughs> but that is <laughs> – <laughs> but that's absurd, man. The, with Chinese – oh, oh. Yeah. Because the deal is – Because this deal in China, yeah. Did you, did you see – did you see Cory Booker's face – and at first, I was like, oh, Cory Booker thinks this guy's a psychopath. But then Cory Booker spoke Chinese, spoke Spanish, sorry, spoke Spanish. And I was like, oh, he had those, he had that big crazy face on because he was like, Beto fucking bit my game. Like, he snatched my chain. Before I was able to speak Spanish first, he spoke Spanish. And I heard a lot of people saying that their Spanish wasn't very good. But I don't speak Spanish, so I don't know. But yeah, I mean, they're all panda bears. Yeah. Exactly. It was it was all just pandering, and it's like, oh, it was so. I was so like, what are you doing? And then one of the moderators, I forget who, was also speaking Spanish. Julian Castro also spoke Spanish, but oh, Julian Castro is another one that I actually thought did re- pretty well. What did you think I about Julian I Castro? I honestly didn't remember anything he said. So, the, the first debate. Correct me if I'm wrong. The first debate was an hour, and the second debate was two hours. No, I think right? I don't think so. I think the I think they were the same length. I think they were both about. Did I miss an hour of the first debate? You very well might have. I watched, I watched the stream from, who, who was it, M- NBC? Who I don't even remember who hosted the debate. It was NBC, NBC. Yeah. So yeah, I I watched it from their website, and it's like five hours of stuff, and you have to like skip into it. I just because like they do a bunch of talking to like voters and stuff, and I don't care about any of that so i skip past that and then at the end they have like a bunch of filler stuff too so but that's where i watched it but i'm they're pretty equivalent in length as far as i remember i'm watching a very disturbing video while we're talking about about a place in taiwan where they're in they're embalming animals they have these buddhist animal funerals and the embalming i mean embalming itself is horrifying but embalming animals is like 
It's like taxidermy, basically. Well, no, not tax, not like taxidermy, actually. Taxidermy, they would take all the fluids out. That's weird. Why do they do that? So they can stage, like, a, a funeral thing. What the heck? Oh, also, I would like to say, speaking of animals... Like, I, this I animal looks still alive. What is going on here? That's gross. All right, well... Hold on. You you watch that. I'm going to take, like, a 30-second break and get some water real quick. All right, we're back from a short commercial break. Um, What I was going to say is I think it's still going on right now is the Yunlin Dog Festival in in China. That shit is oh, disgusting, yeah. man. What's disgusting is that I completely agree with you. And what this should remind people is that eating any kind of meat is disgusting. And dogs, dogs are valuable. They're our friends. But you know what? Other animals have valuable lives too, and they're just as frightened for their own death. And they go through the same horror and agony as their throats are slit and their life disappears before a human's eyes as they slaughter them. So, yeah. This should just remind us that eating meat itself is cruel. Yep. I agree with you. And as a, as a fellow vegan, you can agree. I do. I, I do agree. I. I I'm not gonna call I I will I, right now I feel like I can call myself plant based I'm not I ate an, I'll I'll admit it on the podcast right now I ate an egg today because I was given I was given food with an egg in it actually with also with a lot of meat in it but I did not eat the meat but I did eat the egg so I'm right now you gave it to you I'm uh at at my aunt's restaurant did you tell did you tell them you're living the plant based life. I've told a couple of people there, so I'm hoping that I, I need to tell them next time before they make the food, because basically they just gave me like it was like a noodle soup with like a bunch of meat and an egg, and I was like, oh okay, and I, I was like, ah, you don't want this meat, and I tried to give it to someone, and they were like, no, I don't want it, and so I just ate around it. Um, but yeah, I, th- I don't know, I I think that at least a few people there know, but yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, get that out so next time i'm going to try to talk to them and be like yeah can you not put meat in my stuff um and just like put some vegetables in there but yeah i've i don't want to call myself vegan but i'm definitely for let's not eat meat like let's just or cut at very, at or, or cut back vegetarian or tries cu- vegan it's yeah like or cut or cut back a lot yeah yeah, yeah. i would say i would but say it's not your fault man it's not your fault like we're not, we, we make mistakes we're not always perfect today i accidentally had a bite of, I thought popsicles, man. How many times do popsicles have milk in them? Ah, uh, yeah. I had a, an almond flavored popsicle, and they had milk in there. And I noticed after I had already taken a bite. It's frustrating, but it's very frustrating why this 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 obsession with meat. Yeah, I mean, I and animal products just slipping into all kinds of food accidentally. Yeah, and like I've said, I I wish, I wish I could still eat cheese. That's one of that's probably the biggest thing I miss, but there are definitely alternatives, and I do appreciate that those alternatives are like growing in popularity. Like, I mean, like with all like the the fake meat and stuff, that's good. I th- I really wish there were more cheese and egg alternatives, which there are, but just not not as widely available as they should be. Absolutely, absolutely. It's uh it's a process, but we need to we need to be militant, and we can't be afraid to. To make it known when we're frustrated with the way the system is, like on an airplane, <laughs> you have to yell at a flight attendant or two or three or four. Now you have to be nice to the flight attendant and explain to them what your what what your disagreement with them is, and then you need to write letters to the owners of that co- corporation and be very mean to them. Let me tell you this: I've yelled, I've I've interacted. With flight attendants about this issue on more than a dozen different flights Mm -hmm. and being nice gets you ignored typically because they of course they don't want conflict but if you're just like oh i just i'm just not gonna eat they'll just be like okay you pass by and that's the end of the issue when you make a fuss they remember that shit because they don't they lose face especially these the ones on asian airlines they lose face, and when you point out to them the ridiculousness of the policies that they turn around and support, next time somebody challenges on the, them on this, they're not gonna they're not gonna be like, oh no, you're the one in the wrong. They'll remember, I don't I don't want to lose face and look like a moron mm-hmm. because I'm supporting a policy that's not mine. They'll tell you, I mean, I don't know. This is this is my view, but I'm yeah. My my leaning is just I just I've sent letters. I'm, didn't do anything. Airlines don't give a shit, man. 
They yeah, don't, airlines they just don't give a shit. Airlines mostly suck. And, and if you don't want to, if you if you're gonna treat me like shit and you're gonna ignore me, then I'm not gonna treat you with respect. And I'm sorry. And if you're a representative of the company and you're you're gonna defend them against me against my valid claims, then you. That's fair. I mean, I just workers who are making like not a lot of money. I generally just give them a little bit of space. But I generally agree with what you're saying. Uh, they make more money than us. They're not. That's 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 really a cop out, man. Uh, I don't know. I would like to see what their salaries are. In Taiwan, it's better than us. Is it? Yeah. That's surprising. That's surprising. Us. But they also work a lot. They also work probably more hours than us. But all that aside, I mean, it's still. I don't know. For like workers and stuff, like I generally, it's not their decision. I agree with like pushing. I completely agree with you. And if they, when they like, oh, sorry, we don't have it. That's fine. I'm not. That's not when I get frustrated. It's when they make it sound like I'm doing something wrong by asking for something that should be my right, and they're trying to cheat me out of. That I agree with you on. I agree with you when, when you're like, hey, you know, we're we we don't want meat in our stuff, and they're like, act like that's some ridiculous thing. It's just like, yeah, it's actually not a ridiculous thing, and also the fact that your airline makes it so you know whatever three days in advance we have to like book the tickets so and basically that that's the whole point the meals. point the point of like point to point of, of airline sales for these tickets they have an entire i mean they sell tickets at the airport on, on the expectation that you can buy tickets like up to an hour before the flight yeah but then you're not allowed to get the meal that you're entitled to as a passenger on the plane of your choice you have to you have to be poisoned with the choices that they made yeah. And then and then for them to tell me that I'm being environmentally unfriendly by asking for for a, a meal that doesn't have any animal products inside. Yeah. It's true. That is gall. That's yeah, that's you got to have some balls to make that ridiculous argument. I agree with you. So like fine, you you that's your policy, that's fine. Don't defend it in my face and tell me that I'm I'm a fucking idiot because like your company Pretends like like it treats all their passengers equal, but actually discriminates against people who who have. And I'm not. I mean, veganism by choice is one thing, but there are people with legitimate uh, dietary restrictions that could make them sick. Yeah. The fact that they don't have accommodations for any of those people, because because what? Because the average preference is for microwaved preserved meat. Give me a break. I, Indefensible. I agree. I agree. I totally agree. It's. It's absurd and it's annoying, and I think that they really need to step up their game on that shit because they are not doing a good job. I've written I've written a letter to United before, and and yeah, nothing, not even not even an acknowledgement of receipt. Yeah, it's not it's not surprising, but it's still frustrating. I mean, I've sent letters to transportation companies before, and I've got bad service, and I've gotten checks in the mail. Like every airline is different. Yeah, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what Cathay is made of. I'm calling you out. As you should. I mean, that's they need to they need to get with a the program. They need to figure that stuff out. I mean, for, for crime and his sake, like put a couple extra fucking vegetarian meals on the plane. Like I don't seriously. I don't think that don't, there's I don't a real lie argument. To me. Yeah, ex- definitely don't. Yeah. And don't lie to me that, that the entire crew was about to eat those little fruit cups. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are our personal meals. These are our meals. What, really? The three crew on the plane all ordered fruit meals. Yeah. You think I buy that? Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way in hell, man. It's absurd. It's And it's annoying. But it just takes takes time, man. It takes pressure. You just got to keep pushing these people. It takes vicious anger, and it's going to take... <laughs> to take a little blood a little <laughs> human blood sometimes it does a little eco terrorism the tr- <laughs> the tr- the tree of veganism is is watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants from time to time from time to time from time to time but you know it's the, true the- in taiwan man the reason that taiwanese animal shelters no longer euthanize animals is because a veterinarian killed himself damn it's pretty intense People need Takes to f- human blood. People need to, f- yeah, and people need to f- get their shit together with dogs in Taiwan. That's pissed with me all off. animals, the blatant disrespect. Yeah, 
And it's not specifically a Taiwanese thing. It's just something that I see more regularly. It's a human thing. It's, it's a human yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's bad, man. It's really bad. Just abandoning animals. It's just like, okay, if you can't take care of an animal, maybe don't get one, you know? And definitely don't be breeding animals that people don't don't need. Greed, man. It's greed. It's selfishness. It's short-sightedness. But Vanity. Yeah, all of that. I, I went to somebody's farm a few months ago. Mm-hmm. And the, this person kept a whole bunch of dogs at the stench, man. There were a pile. I mean, not a pile. There there were a, a line, a row of about 15 dog cages in two rows of vicious, chained, and severely neglected dogs with open sores and, and excrement. Like, the, the way that... Rural people, not all rural people, but some rural people and people in general treat their animals is appalling. Yeah. And yeah. my friend told me that one time this this was his. I I won't I won't go into too much detail, but he said he went to he he talked to this guy before. He said like, you really need to do something about these dogs. Like you can't you can't leave them like this. They look hungry. They look neglected. Like he'll mm. go for days at a time without feeding them. And one time he went over to this guy's farm, and sure enough, that you know, a couple of them were just laying there, starved, starved to death. Jeez, I mean, just sprawled out dead, flies picking out their eyes. This is why why we want these dogs, honestly. Yeah, what's the purpose of that? I don't understand the thought process that goes into that. I think for some people, they think it's like a security thing. They think that hearing these vicious dogs will scare people from, you and know, putting- as if they're not in cages and tied up, anyways. That's what I was gonna say. It's like if you're if it's gonna be in a cage, it doesn't matter. It can bark all at once, and like they're gonna bark at random stuff anyway. Like there's dogs close to one of the schools I work at, and they bark all the time, and it's it's not scary. Like if they're barking all the time because they're hungry or because they're angry or whatever, then that doesn't alert you to an intruder. And also, I'm not scared of a dog that's in a cage. Like it's not going to get me. Like who cares? That's so stupid. Yeah. There's just the utter lack of intellect that goes into the, a thought process like that is astounding. I couldn't agree more. That's upsetting, man. But I don't know. I feel like at least, you know, there's some there's some progress on the issue. There's still a lot of pretty ignorant people out there, but just got to keep, keep going after it. All right, what else is going on? Mm, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I need to write another article soon. Posted my article about a uh, Hongwei. Yeah, that's pretty messed. Good up. article. Hey, wait, 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 what? Oh, you're talking about the the, the um, Interpol guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice article. It's, it's important, man. Like, it's getting lots of hits. Is it? On Facebook, that's what Facebook said. Oh, I'm more doing better than some, a lot of our videos. I'm more concerned about uh about how it does on the website but that's good i'm glad people should on the website i haven't looked at the statistics recently but also I also encourage people to go you know read stuff read stuff on our on our on our site you're right i mean there's been a lot more articles recently but yeah i don't know that i mean the i guess for anyone i'll give it a little taste so people hopefully will go like actually read it uh read all of our articles but uh Meng Hongwei is was the inter, Interpol chief, and basically went to China and got er, detained for almost like two years, and then now he's like getting charged with bribery with like very basically no evidence. So just goes to show that uh, even international bodies are not not free from from Chinese authoritarianism, and so it's it's bad, man. So people need to people need to be paying attention to that stuff. But <clears throat> there's been quite a few there's been quite a few good articles I feel like up on our stuff. I haven't even I don't do a great job of keeping up with it all the time. But uh, it's good it's good to read now and again. I feel like people don't read enough. Reading news. is very important. Reading's good. Just make the website your homepage. It's a good idea. And also Please do. don't for, don't forget to uh, subscribe on YouTube. Ring the bell. You'll get our notifications because we're gonna have. Hopefully, I'll finish this this video that I'm doing maybe tonight or tomorrow. I got a really busy week next week, but I'm gonna do my best. Yeah, do my best to to edit some more of these videos. 
so you guys can see what's going on in Hong Kong. And we're going to try to, hopefully we get to go to like a Hangoyu rally or something sometime soon. Let me know. Well, there was one today in Shinju, but there's no way I could go. Oh, you got to get rid of that Sunday, Sunday thing, man. Just reschedule it. It's not going to happen. There's no other time I can do it, but I can can if we can get a, if we can get a good plan, I can cancel one time. It's not like a cancel big deal. Cancel forever. <laughs> nah. I'm going to cancel some of these weekday classes is what I'm going to do. Yeah, but nobody else has weekdays off. Well, that's just what you got to do. You got to also, we got to find like two days during the week that we just cancel. And then we have a weekend. <laughs> oh, when I, when I'm done with my visa issues, then yeah. All right. <clears throat> Without going into any more specifics. No specifics here. We can do that. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I mean, we both got to get. December 31st. We gotta get some of that stuff worked out, but we'll get it. It'll be done soon, and then we'll be we'll be good. We'll be on our way to Taiwanese citizenship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gotta get Free China Post big enough that grants us. You hear that, everybody? You need to share this page with your friends. You need to follow our Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and everything, and you need to share that business. Get us real big so we can get that Taiwanese citizenship. That's right. That's absolutely right. So we can make Taiwan the 51st state. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that sounds tempting. Um, just a note on the review of all that, because I, I posted all this stuff from the vegetarian project. I think we should make that a, a yearly thing. I'm down. I'm down for that. I feel like I could probably get some people to do it. Do our... Merciful Mastication May. It was good, man. I mean, how, how many people did you get to actually eat vegan? I mean, I know some people cheated, I mean, including myself. The numbers are confidential, but... Okay, fair enough. It was quite yeah, a few. Probably, I, I was surprised by how many people you said were doing it. The original cohort... I mean, it was small because I had to... A lot of these people I had to keep track of. I had to ask them every single day mm -hmm. or like every few days. So the, the the first cohort for the first half was 19, and I think it dropped to 13 by the second half. Still not bad. Yeah, but most of those were... Hmm, even the people who stayed really close did quite a... did a little bit of cheating. Mm -hmm. and, but, uh, I mean... Did you watch any of those videos that I posted? Uh, no, I think the only... a very <coughs> private playlist, but... I, I think the only ones I watched were... Uh, or read the articles? I... No, I don't think I... I don't think I did any of that, Jordan, actually. Jordan, I don't think you have Free China Post as your homepage right now. I don't, um, but That's I... A problem. I will make it my homepage right now. Wait, how do I make it my homepage? On my phone. I don't know if uh, Google Chrome has home pages, and that's why you should switch to Firefox. Ooh, that's a good stop point. giving Google information. And also, you can use the uh, special thing that I gave you, so you can. Um, oh yeah, you need to send that to me again. But yes, I do need to do that. Yeah, everyone should use Firefox. It may be a little bit slower, and you're not used to it, and it's less efficient. But it it has certain very valuable advantages. <laughs> you can figure really out what those are <laughs> and if you if you send us a paypal donation we'll tell you what those things are yeah if you want to make like a little button to pay for the server costs and stuff then that would be good we also um we might have to we might have to start a little uh whatchamacallit the, w the word my brain is going to is pinterest but that's totally not what i'm thinking of Oh, we could definitely start a Pinterest. <laughs> what, I, what I'm really thinking of is starting a uh, Patreon. Start a little Patreon. That, that could work for us. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. But uh, I don't want it to be too obvious. I don't want it to be obnoxious. Yeah, I'm just I'm mostly, mostly joking. But it would be nice if we could get some actual funding so we could go do like more investigative journalism and things like that. Yeah, it would, I suppose. I suppose... Here we go. Why is everything 538, man? Here's the other thing that I was going to send you. I'll send you all these links so I don't forget. You want to end this, or do you have anything else to talk about? Here's the, I'm sending you the link for the propaganda website, but I'm going to see if I can find the 
specific video that I was telling you about. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have like a ton of uh, things to talk about. I'm trying to think if I do, but we can probably probably cut it off. Anything else you want to say about the debates? I mean, the debates were pretty hot. Um, trying to think. I don't know. I just generally thought that there were a lot of people who were pretty disingenuous about where their actual their actual policies lie. It's a primary race, man. Yeah, I, I know, but that that doesn't mean that it's it's not true. I still feel like that they were. There's a lot of moderately disingenuous people. Yeah, yeah um, I'm just saying that's that's what you gotta that's what you gotta expect in this kind of. It's situation. true, but people, I I feel like some people don't don't notice that, and they say, oh well, all these candidates are kind of the same, and it's like, well, you need to look at who's been consistent, um, and as you know, push for these same things for years, maybe decades. <coughs> Ernie, <coughs> Ernie Sanders, Ernie Sanders. Um, so you need to like keep an eye on that, and you know, look at maybe people who have marched with Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, Bernie Sanders, or you know, who supported you know busing, uh, or maybe who didn't support busing and spoke at segregationist eulogies, Joe Biden. So, I mean, you just people need to do their research is what I consider. I mean, you don't have to support the same candidate that I support or that we support, but you need to do your research, and people need to also vote in the primaries. Like, you, you, everyone's right. got You don't have to support uh, Mike Pence and Ivanka Trump 2020, but if you want to, you can, you can read about their policy choices. You can read about how great Mike Pence's father worship is for Donald Trump along with Ivanka's. That's right. That's a good point. And you could, yeah, you could learn about how they have just insane policies. Oh, speaking of Ivanka, did you see her at G20 trying to talk to Merkel? Why is she allowed to go to G20? Like, she's not, oh my gosh. Yeah, I saw her walking around. I was like, they should not have let her in the fucking building. Like, she's not a government official. She really has no place being there. And Gosh, man. Donald Trump must be so angry. Kushner, too. Like, none of those people have any business being in the White House. They're l- it's These literally... These should not even have security clearances. These people are not... Oh, my gosh. Nepotism, man. The definition of nepotism. He's like an Eastern European, like a, like a Central Asian autocrat. I mean, he should have been born in, like, Turkmenistan. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope for his sake that it doesn't... I'm, I'm going to stop myself before I say something that... I heard recently about Kathy, Kathy Griffin. Do you remember her? And how basically she like they tried to charge her with like making threats to to kill the president or something mm-hmm. like that because of some joke that she told. Oh, she because she, she posted, posted the pictures with with a severed Trump head, right? And that that qualifies as like you know a twenty year to life prison term crime. Jeez. Apparently, like under Donald Trump's uh, Justice Department. He, this guy, man, oh my gosh, bad man. He's a bad man. That's right, Jordan. There's a there's a hilarious video though of of Ivanka bad, bad trying man. to talk to like all these like world leaders, and they basically just ignore her. And she's just you can see on her face she's just so dejected. She's just like yes. The I fact that being so being like a spoiled daughter of a of a world leader, you know which country this reminds me of is China and how like the. The Canadian thing, man, with uh, how they detained the daughter of the Huawei chief, and now China is basically ready to cut off trade relations with China because of one spoiled daughter of a. CEO. Well, they already they already cut off the. I mean, obviously, we're not. I mean, being two perfect vegans, we're we're not in favor of like selling pork anyway. But like, they cut off pork trade with, and it's it's hilarious because China is in the middle of a huge crisis with their Chinese swine fever. I yeah I don't, I don't know what the hell they're thinking. But. Formerly called African swine fever, but to act like they don't need pork imports at this time is a, it's laughable. It's a staple food in in Chinese culture. Like they will they need that, and they're it's cutting it off. It's not a staple food. It's I mean this is completely artificial, man. Like fifty years ago, how many people ate pork regularly? It's, not uh, that it's, many. It's true, but like right now, it's a it's a main food, and it's it's very popular. So, but what I'm obviously. 
we 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 know what we think. Like we we you shouldn't eat any animals. You, know, you shouldn't kill animals. But the fact that they're acting like they don't need that right now, in the while they're literally, I sent you that vid. There's a video that I I retweeted on Twitter of them killing piglets with like a hammer, and there's videos of literally pits. They dig these pits. They throw all these pigs in them and burn them alive in China, and they're acting like they don't need pork imports is a joke man it's it's laughable china is in such a bad situation right now and that is why we need to be strong and not do things like let the u.s companies trade with huawei we need to absolutely vice grip them and shut them down everyone should be boycotting china and if your country is not boycotting china which no, no countries are yet you need to push your government to boycott china because they are an authoritarian nation that is doing massive human rights violations. Recently, a group in the UK showed that they are, they're doing forced organ harvesting on political dissidents. It's disgusting. They should not be allowed to operate. They, their, their government should be opposed, and they should not be allowed to— UN? Are you fucking kidding me? They should not be—they're on the Human Rights Council, for f fuck's sake. And it's you know, absurd. the most disturbing part of this is that a lot of Canadians— and the, the former prime minister of Canada, basically, because he's a lobbyist for the Chinese government, he's basically saying that Canada needs because because Chinese trade is so important that that they should drop the extradition thing and they should just let her go and and suck at the teat of Xi Jinping and to sacrifice law and order to say that laws don't matter anymore mm. simply simply because of of a trade whatever a trade temper tantrum. Yeah. You know, th this is setting a precedent that's dangerous for the world. But you know what? This is Donald Trump's fault because he's the one who politicized this by stating that he would drop the extradition, that he would drop the trial for for this lady as part and parcel of a trade accord with China. He is the most disgusting anti-law and order traitor to the United States the world has ever elected president. He's also he's also said that you know. People who work with law enforcement are rats, which is exactly what a mob boss would say. Like he, He's a criminal, he's a traitor, and he should face treason charges for, for supporting enemies of the United States against our own government and our Constitution. He has failed to defend the American Constitution, and he supports our enemies. He's a traitor by, by the very definition of the word. Absolutely. So you have to, you have to oppose this stuff economy e e economic things are minute compared to one law and order and two human rights like the the absurdity of saying that well we should you know we should kowtow to these dictators to these people that like like Mohammed bin Salman in Saudi Arabia oh well he cut up a anyone. journalist well anyone. you know anyone yeah absolutely anyone but kowtowing to dictators and human rights abusers because it might benefit us economically that's that's stomach churning, man. That stuff is disgusting, and it should be opposed at every avenue. We need to get fucking serious about this shit instead of just being like, well, you know, whatever, uh, you know, China, well, whatever. I don't know, you know, it, it helps our trade, it might help our economy. The U.S. economy is fine the way it is. We could take a dip. We just need to get serious about like wage increases for the lowest earners. Maybe make a law that says that CEOs can't make 400 times what their lowest paid employees say. Do something instead of, you know, let's do something about our own economy as opposed to trading with these fucking monsters. I agree. I don't know. On that note, we can we could end it. On a happy note, on a high note, we're all happy. There's nothing time. happy we should end it on. Something happy, man. What's something happy that's happening? Um, school's out for summer. Yeah, but that's bad for me. That means I have to take more classes in summer camps. Uh, that means you can take as many summer camps as you choose to take, Jordan, because there is such thing as saying no to your boss. It's true. I get pressured into it. But if they if they try to give me I, – I got to do one next week. But if they try to push me into another one the week after, I 100% will say no. And that's going on the record, so I have to do it or otherwise I look like a cuck. Yeah, but you're going to do it the following week anyway. So Maybe. I, I also need to make I need to make money because the U.S. school system is ridiculous and the tuition that I had to pay 
and take out loans for is ridiculous. You can so. thank your state's government for that. Fuck them. Nah. Did you vote? Did you when you turned eighteen? Hey, let's see. You were ninety one, right? So I guess you yeah. didn't vote until you were nineteen. Mm. I turned eighteen like a month before. Uh, sorry, like two three months before the first election, I voted in. I probably, I probably was eighteen. I didn't. I I honestly didn't vote until. I think towards the end of my college or right after I got out of college. Oh man, I, Jordan! I, I, I was a bad, I was a bad citizen. Jordan, I'm, and then you I'm gonna, complain about tuition. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I, I'm being honest about it. Well, because I was like, I at that point and most uh-huh. throughout most of my college, I was very, I was like, this is all bullshit, and like my vote doesn't matter anyway. Like it's just voting for, like I can vote for, you know, Hillary or, you know, whatever. Like. Some some other person on the other side who's basically the same corporate as tool. I had a big argument with Ray Ray about this the other day. She's like, they're all the same. I'm like, mm, that's not. They're true. not. They're not. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's that's. I used to hold that idea, but that was that was in my college days, and um, I understand that feeling. But the reality is that it's not the same. If we had Hillary Clinton, I would have hated it. I would have complained about it every single day. If she was the president right now, I'd be on this podcast talking about all the failures that she has, and I would be saying that she is a piece of shit and that I hate her. That being said, she almost certainly, no one could know because this is a hypothetical, would have been better than Donald Trump. In some ways, she would have been worse, but in most of the ways, she would have been better. So it's just false to say that they are all the same. We can say that they're all similar, they're all too similar. And they all have many of the same problems. But to say that they're all the same is mental laziness. You're just being lazy. You're just saying, well, I don't like them, and that's fine. I don't like most of the candidates. I think they're both mostly bad. But to say that one uh, voting for the less of two evils is still voting for less evil. And it's not good, and we should try to reform that. We should try to push candidates that are better and that are not evil. But there's still degrees of evil. There's still degrees of shittiness. And so you need to you, you have to vote. You can't just say in Taiwan, you can't just say, well, Han Guoyu and Tsai Ing-wen are both have problems. So I'm gonna vote for no one. That's a lazy it's just laziness. So that also it kind of upsets me. But I also sympathize with people that feel that way because I used to be in that situation. Is that positive? It wasn't terribly positive, but a little bit, maybe. I don't know. What else? Some, something's, something's got to be positive. Um, we went from school being out to to uh, Hillary versus Bernie. I mean, Hillary versus Trump. Trump all over again. I don't know. I can't really think of anything super positive. Well, it's avocado season soon. That's not positive for me, but I'm I'm glad that. Why it's is that not positive? You. you you can learn to love them. I'm not going to. I won't. I don't like avocados. I think they're disgusting. But I'm happy for you. I'm happy for everyone that likes avocados. I'm not. I don't think avocados are a stain on the world. I think that they make people happy. Well, wow, that's, that's really that's really good of you to say <laughs> that they're not a stain on the world. I think that they make a lot of people happy, and I'm glad that they like. They like them, and I'm glad they make people happy. But they, they don't particularly make me happy. So, I'm, but I'm happy for everyone that's going going to eat them, and I encourage. Good job. That's good. Eat those avocados and enjoy it. Have be happy. But we all I like will, the things we like. I will okay. not be. I will not be participating. Well, it sounds like a Tom Perez argument. Uh, good things are good, and uh, bad things are bad, and uh. That's why we gotta help host Trump and um, who's you know, Tom Perez? We're gonna lead with our values. The DNC chair. Oh, oh. That's what well, he, we have <laughs> to lead with our values, Jordan. That's a fact. That's what, that's what he always says. He always he always just speaks in platitudes. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, you know, we're gonna oppose Donald Trump at every year, uh, turn. You know, and uh, you know, just just good things are good. I like good things, and uh, I know you know this may be a little controversial, but uh. Bad things are bad, and uh, I, I oppose them. And uh, you know, leave with our values. You know, that's that's what we got to do. Um, 
we got to push for good policies, not bad policies. And, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton, I'm with her, you know. I'm with her. Yeah. And so this is great. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I don't really like Bernie, and I'm going to oppose him at every turn uh, because he's actually pushing for change. And so, you know, just good good things are good, bad things are bad, and uh, that's all I really have to say. I'm Tom Perez. Thank you. Jordan, when are you going to do your Ph.D. in political science? Well, I, I, don't, ha- I don't have my master's, so. When are you going to do your master's in history and then your Ph.D. in political science? If I can do a PhD in history in Taiwan, I'll probably do it when I... Why would you do it in history? Let me ask you that. That's a good point. Well, because that's what you said. It seems like it seems like you... I mean, I don't know. I don't know based on your academic history, but it seems like you liked history because it was political. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Yeah, to some degree. I think that's true. I think that's true. Um... I, I mean, I also, I, I also just, I do just genuinely like history. I mean, I think history is like important. I think it informs, obviously, it informs what has happened and and the way we think going forward. I mean, so, I think biology is important, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do a master's in biology. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, think math is very important. I, I, I actually like the challenge of math, but I would never do a master's in math. Oh, I hate math, so I wouldn't do that. But um, you shouldn't hate anything, except all. I hate doing math. I don't hate math itself. I think you just didn't have any good math teachers. I think I had at least one good math teacher, but it wasn't enough. I had a lot of really great math teachers, and like the really the the ones who love math, they make you love math. I don't know, because I had some that loved math, but they were just not good teachers. I think that makes a difference too, but. I had a few um, teachers who got me really excited. I had one. Uh, my real big transformation, I think, was uh, my stats teacher. And he's the first guy. I, I I had lots of math teachers, and a lot of them were really good, and they tried to get me pumped about it. Mm-hmm. And my math was pretty good, better than better than most kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just never worked. But, like, my stats class, I don't know. He was so excited about it. I was like, I got to get excited about this, too. And I did. Fair enough. My math is terrible. I almost failed a non-credit class in college because my math is so bad so that, that lets you know any anywhere where my my math is um but yeah i mean i th- i think i do like history partially because it's political but i do i also think that it's it informs just the way that everything is created and i think that's important for awareness i also like sociology i like a lot of those things and so i like to study them i like to learn more about them so i don't know so i would like you know i would like to all those things kind of merge political science i would be down to do a poli sci masters but if i did a poli sci masters and then a poli sci phd i feel like it would just all be the same shit you know i did a poli sci masters and now i'm doing a poli sci phd but at different universities i would probably end up doing them at the same university oh maybe not maybe not i don't know how many there's not a lot of universities in taiwan that offer both those in at least partially in English, because I I have to do at least. There's only a handful. Of the I mean, I would recommend the one Abby suggested if you're trying to stay in the north. Maybe maybe I could do my I could do my masters at that one and then do this PhD at the same one you go to. Oh, oh, the masters in time. When I did my masters in Canada, it only took me. I mean, it took me over a, over a, a calendar year, but it basically only took me like a year of coursework more or less but it, in Taiwan it seems like they take about two years which is irritating I'm okay with that as long as the work is more sparse I don't know the, the thing is is really what I what I hope is once we get residency if I could if we could make some money from our website and things like that and I could work less hours teaching I really like teaching I do really like teaching but if I could work less teaching hours and, and devote more time to this and also education that would be cool. That would yeah. be desirable. So, I don't know. Maybe we need to write a book or something. But uh, About what? You know, I don't know yet. Something. Oh, also, I, I got I to gotta shout out my dad's book. You got to – everyone should go buy that book. It's coming out tomorrow. It's coming out too. It's coming out in July, the beginning of July. So, so – Go go check that out. You can go to I think Car- carlscoaching.com is where you can go to go to check it out. Go check who's that the pu- out. Who's the publisher? 
That I actually don't know. I don't know who the publisher is, but you can you can definitely find. I know Car I know Carl's Coaching definitely will have it. Um, you can find the book. I would suggest that you find the book somewhere else, but you can find it on Amazon. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Amazon, but uh, you know, that's that's something you can do. But yeah, I mean, it's one way one way one way to go about it. It's probably better that you buy it and whatever but it's a uh, seems like a it seems like a, it's an interesting book um especially if you were of the christian persuasion um but it's also just like a thoughtful book about life and parenting and dealing with kids and learning from kids but um the book is called a parent a parent a parent faith um a parent as in like that's very apparent and easy to see um, so yeah, you can go check that out. But yeah, may, I don't know. We could, we could write a book about something, being expats or immigrants. I guess. I feel like the word. I don't. I don't know if I like the word expats. How do you feel about the word expat versus immigrant, and where they, where they lie? This could be like a not necessarily super positive, but not a you know not a downer. The word expat to me means somebody that's. In a country and doesn't intend to stay there long term, they consider it a short term kind of stint. Okay. They're yeah, not. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to integrate into the local culture. They're there to do it to do a job and leave, more or less. Versus an immigrant is somebody who goes to the country, probably long term to stay permanently. Okay. That's yeah, how that's, I would see it. That's pretty much how I'd see it too. Because like I've seen like. There's a few articles about like, oh, why do we call like, <clears throat> like Westerners? Why do we call them expats? Whereas like we call like people that move to like the U.S. or like Europe. Why do we like people from maybe South America or Africa? Because or typically, Asia. people who come to Taiwan don't stay here permanently. They're coming from wealthier countries. To, when I say wealthier, I mean higher. Uh, some of them come from countries with higher GDP statuses. But I wouldn't. I, by the same token, I wouldn't call a Filipino here an expat. I would call them a migrant worker. Yeah, that's that's sure. I wouldn't call them either. I wouldn't call them an expat or. A, but see, that's the thing is, you wouldn't call them. You wouldn't call them an expat. You would call them an an, a, an immigrant worker. Because so, the, I mean, the words have certain connotations. So yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm just. I would. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, what you thought about that. That's, I think that's that's how I would use. That's how I understand the words and their connotations as we use them but that's not to say that it's right or wrong i would probably generally <clears throat> i would probably generally agree with that so i would probably call myself an immigrant to taiwan i guess because i don't plan on leaving anytime yeah i'd probably well do you plan on ever leaving no not i mean then yeah you know, you're probably I've, an immigrant i'm not i'm not saying that that could never change but i don't I, no, I don't plan on going. I, it's not like I'm going to be like, I'm going to stay 10 years and then go back. Like, no, I don't, I don't see myself going back. Like, if people ask me, because <clears throat> people in Taiwan and also in the States often ask me, like, oh, when are you coming back? To, when are you going back or coming back to the States? And I'm just like, uh, never, probably. <coughs> oh, God bless you, Ari. I'm choking on my own saliva. And God bless everyone. <laughs> Sure, George. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. You have anything else to add? Anything you thought about from the debates? Any other news that you want to talk about? Um. Nah. We can end it there then. We should probably cut it off. We've been going for about two hours now, so I feel like we talked about a lot of different things. That we have. All right, well, we do appreciate you guys listening, doing our best, um, and we would appreciate if you would go to our website and make it your homepage because it is the best website on the face of the earth, um, per t perchance even in the whole universe. Uh, also, go check out the the Facebook, uh, the YouTube videos. Sorry, the YouTube videos that we've uploaded. Um, yeah, you can we'll find keep them posting. on. Yeah, you can find them on different places, but. Um, all of the videos will be on YouTube, and on YouTube they will also have subtitles, which is a little bit better. Um, if you do not understand Mandarin uh, and or you don't understand people in Hong Kong speaking English. 
So well, it's also there's a lot of background noise. That's true. It's a, sometimes it is hard to understand um, what they're saying because of the background noise. It so. was hard for me to transcribe a lot of these places because there's so much back, background noise. Yeah, it's true. So I would say definitely YouTube is the best place to check it out. Uh, go check them out there. Give them a like. Definitely subscribe to our YouTube and uh, ring the bell so you get notifications when we upload new stuff because we'll be uploading a fair amount of videos in the coming days on this specific topic and you know don't forget to follow us on all the social media stuff blah 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 you know twitter everything everything except for podcast services podcast services are free china pod everything else will be free china post um so let us know and if you have any questions you can always email us at social at free china post free china post (laughs) so social at free china post.com we'll field your questions if you're not a troll We'll, we'll interact with you. You can talk to us on Facebook and every everything. Twitter is where I'm most online, I guess. You're probably most on Instagram, I guess. So, I mean, I, I really, I'm not using social media that much. I'm mostly, I'm mostly Twitter. Twitter is the best place to reach me. But if you, if you send us stuff on any of the social media spots or at uh, social at free ch- sorry. Social at freechinapost.com. I'll I will 100% reply to you if you're not simply just a troll. If you're Umadang, then I won't reply to you. Maybe maybe I will because I told um, one guy he replied to me. Uh, I said something about Taiwan and he replied to me on Twitter. He said like, oh, "Why would you support like a person jumping off a bridge or something?" And I said, "Well, I would support if it was, if it was Xi Jinping." And, oh. and then and then he didn't reply to, he didn't reply to me anymore so um, are you surprised about that no 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 and that's i was very happy that he didn't surprise he didn't reply to me because i don't i don't want to i don't want to have those arguments it's like i don't want to argue with people that are just gonna be stupid um i had not to say this person is stupid i think they're probably very smart but i had someone talking to me on twitter also and i won't go into any details about it because it's not important but they're basically arguing with me and i found out that they support someone that i don't support and they weren't really giving me any arguments they're just trying to like carry water for this person and I'm, so i just ended it so yeah if you're gonna come at me with something i ended that, them i ended them no i just ended the conversation <laughs> i didn't end <laughs> If you're going to come at me with something stupid, then, yeah, we're not going to have a conversation. But uh, if you want to have a discussion, let's... I let's will just, end you. I'll fucking end you. Um, but, yeah, we, we like discussions. So, yeah, hit us up. Um, hopefully we'll have some good articles coming soon. I have a couple people in discussions with me talking to me about their they want to write articles for us. So, yeah, don't make make free China, free China post dot com your homepage it'll be good for you you'll learn and harass more. Ray too also harass Ray our editor in chief because she needs to make us a new logo and yeah also she needs to do a little bit more editing too I have to say come on Ray but yeah mainly that but we'll we'll talk to you all soon we mainly but not only I promise I promise on whatever you want to promise on that we will not also take this long to put out another podcast. Uh, for the next one so even if it's even if it's no one will record a podcast with me i'll record a a solo podcast we won't make you wait like three weeks again but we'll get it out to you so thanks for listening and we love y'all and hugs and kisses xoxo and all that stuff but thanks for listening